I had these thoughts about Genesis and stuff like that because I watched Maximilian Dude's video probably like a few weeks back where he talked about is Genesis possibly coming back? And the thing that he kind of alluded to was the logo of Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Now, if I bring this up for you guys on the internet, this is the logo, right? And we have a red color kind of surrounding the logo here. This is pretty insane because obviously, if anything's associated with the red color in Final Fantasy VII, it's Genesis. Now, could this just be a color to allude to you know, like just kind of separate the logo from Remake a little bit. Like Remake had that kind of bluish greenish Mako tint to it. And now this one will have the red just to be something different. But I think that the letters being highlighted in red like that symbolizes that there's going to be a lot of pain at the end of this game. Like as they've alluded to, you know, this game kind of being like Empire Strikes Back in Star Wars with characters kind of at their lowest point. But also this red tint possibly alluding to the return of Genesis, man. And uh, it's not an impossible thing because Genesis never actually died in Final Fantasy VII. Um, spoilers, right? In Crisis Core, uh, Zack defeats Genesis, but he doesn't end up killing him. Uh, after this, Genesis is healed and he's actually taken to Deep Ground uh, in Dirge of Cerberus where they try to get him to join Deep Ground in the Sviets, but he's not interested. So when we look at this logo, this logo could be hinting at his return with the red colored lettering. And when you would use the DMW in Crisis Core, basically anytime Genesis hijacked your DMW, these red feathers would kind of float down and they had this red tint to them. So it was kind of insane to see this logo and these feathers and think like, all right, I'm putting two and two together here. This could actually mean something. So when we go back and we look at some of the stuff that happened in the compilation, uh, we can look at, at first, the Loveless poem. Now, Genesis quotes Loveless throughout Crisis Core, and he's always looking for the missing act, the gift of the goddess. Now, the gift of the goddess is, you know, something that has to do with Crisis Core, whether it's, you know, him being healed, or um, what Zack gives to him, as in Zack giving him his pride of his soldier back after defeating him. But when they talk about the fifth verse on the Final Fantasy wiki here, it says this. On the fifth verse that is revealed at the end of the game, the guide explains this is not the true lost verse, but a verse composed of Genesis himself that reflects his new mindset. So I've been trying to tell people this for a while now that I think that when Genesis was defeated, he ultimately realized that he was very selfish when he was degrading. So when Zack defeats him and brings him outside, he's a completely different person. And um, he puts this new poem out, right? And it says, with Angeal and Sephiroth gone, the verse symbolizes that Genesis will take up their legacy to protect the planet himself. The verse mentions of the sea and refers to the flooded chamber Genesis appears in at the end of Dirge of Cerberus. Now, if we go back to what the poem actually says in the final verse, we're looking at Loveless here. This is the verse that plays after he's defeated by Zack in Benora. Um, that is in Japanese. Hold on. So here, it says it right here. Even if the morrow is barren of promises, Nothing shall forestall my return, to become the dew that quenches the land, to spare the sands, the seas, the skies. I offer thee this silent sacrifice." So Genesis wrote this, this wasn't the final verse of Loveless, like we've kind of already established. And when it came to Genesis after Crisis Core, he was taken by Vice and Nero to join Deep Ground and the Sviets. Now this was actually before Genesis was a legitimate character. Here, how do I get this top TV wiki thing off here? Okay. Before he was a legitimate character in the compilation, this game was actually just saying little things about him, but uh, hinting at uh, his appearance in Crisis Core before he was even established. So it says here, when uh, it talks about Genesis after Crisis Core, he was brought to Deep Ground, and the two soldier members, Vice and Nero, attempted to persuade him to join in the rebellion against the Restrictors, current leaders of Deep Ground. Now, I'm not too familiar with the Restrictors. I think this might have been something to do with... Uh, the online mode of Dirge of Cerberus that was only in Japan. But it says Genesis declined and sealed himself in a fluttering cavern beneath Midgar, awaiting the day he would be needed to protect the world in Sephiroth and Angeal's stead. Vincent discovers that according to Shinra executive Scarlet's private files, the Sviets were spliced with Genesis's cells and subjected to various experiments to see how they reacted. So Genesis wasn't there to, um, you know, join in their hostility and 
be evil and things like that. In fact, Shinra took him back so that they could use his DNA to strengthen the Deep Ground soldiers which you fight in Dirge of Cerberus, the Deep Ground party. So Genesis seals himself in this watered cavern and in the secret ending to this game, which, you know, people interpret him as uh, being evil because he says this stuff like, oh, there's still much work to do, my brother. You know, it's just getting started and he flies into the air and he takes Vice's body with him. Um, this happens in the end of the game and a lot of people just speculated like, yeah, this is just saying, hey, Genesis is this new character you're gonna learn about in Crisis Core. But as we're kind of like finding out with Nomura and these guys, they were planning this stuff for quite a while, like ever since Advent Children, the remake and Crisis Core and all these other things, like Nomura had this huge plan along with Nojima. So it probably did mean something. And this probably means that he is going to come back in Rebirth. And now Maximilian Dude had this thought in his Genesis video where he talked about Genesis will show up as an antagonist for Zack to fight in Zack's timeline. Now, does that make a whole lot of sense seeing as how this dude wants to protect the planet and has had a change of heart? And he said he's gonna protect the planet in uh, Sephiroth and Angeal's stead? Uh, yeah, I mean, like, you think like he's gonna be this great guy, but here's how I interpret it. This is where it gets interesting. When Genesis is degrading as a soldier and he does not know where to go and he is desperate to try and find a heal for his body to just repair himself and keep himself alive, he becomes crazy and selfish, right? And he starts attacking people, but the people he attacks and the things that he does are not primarily targeted towards innocent people. They're targeted at Shinra, right? He goes after Shinra and he's going after the scientists. He's going after Hojo. He's going after Sephiroth. He's going after Zack. He's going after all these people in uh, Shinra that had something to do with the way he was created or something to do with the way he was healed. Now this is insane because I think that when he says this poet, uh, poetry line in Act 5 where even if the morrow is barren of promises, nothing shall forestall my return. To become the dew that quenches the land, to spare the seas, the sands, and the skies, I offer thee this silent sacrifice. And I'm kind of taking this as if Genesis is an antagonist in Rebirth, he might be somebody who is following the phrase of the road to hell is paved with good intentions. So he might be a good guy in his mind, but he might be somebody that is doing horrible things to innocent people for the greater good in his mind. And how I interpret this as is when he talks about the dew that quenches the land, there's a land around Midgar that is very, very dry and there's no resources, it's a complete wasteland because the reactors are taking all of the, the land's energy, the spirit energy, and it's not able to replace itself or recycle like it normally is. When people die, it just burns out. So you see that this land is kind of like the wasteland, and I feel like when he says to become the dew that quenches the land, this could be in reference to saving the planet. Now, in this sense, when I talk about the road to hell is paved with good intentions, I think that if he is an antagonist in Zack's story in Rebirth, where he comes back and he's a part of these radical changes to the timeline, he may have been activated or released from that cavern in the sea due to what Sephiroth is doing in the timeline. And if he comes back, he might righteously think that he needs to attack Shinra and innocent people that have nothing to do with what's happening to him, people that are part of the greater problem. Now, I don't know if this is like a for sure thing. This is just a speculative thought, but I have this feeling that Zack is going to be, if he is fighting Genesis, Genesis is going to be attacking Shinra in a radical manner, something that um, not even Avalanche would be doing, something that he might be attacking the building, he might be attacking just the office workers who don't really do anything that extreme or horrible. And Zack might have to have this internal battle with himself where he's trying to figure out, okay, I hate Shinra, I hate Shinra because they put me in that tank, they chased me for like a year, somehow I'm alive, right? And they've taken away five, four or five years of my life. But at the same time, a lot of these innocent, ignorant people are gonna be attacked by Genesis and I just can't sit here being the good hearted person that I am and let him do this. So it might be that in Zack's alternate universe or his alternate timeline that Genesis is gonna, is gonna come back and attack Shinra and try to take it down by whatever means necessary, even if that means by taking as many lives as he wants to take 
to protect the planet and redeem himself. And Zack is gonna have to sit there in his way and say, no, you can't do this. I know you think you paved the way with good intentions here, but you're doing something truly horrible. So I think we'll see how it plays out in Rebirth. I don't exactly have, you know, this isn't like a solid thought, right? I haven't even phrased this all that well, and it could be something completely different from what Genesis is trying to do. I mean, he could come back and be a complete good guy. But this is the thought I have right now, where Genesis, if he comes back and he's the antagonist in Zack's storyline, he's going to be trying, down, trying to take down Shinra by any means possible to protect the planet. And Zack is going to have to be like, hey man, you need to pump the brakes here. You're attacking innocent people. I can't let this go down. So these are my two thoughts on this. And if you guys have any thoughts about that, you know, you can obviously let me know. But that'll do it for this video.